Well, thank you so much for the wonderful introduction. And um, I feel like I'm now in a room of friends with with some of you I've only known for a few days, but um, this is a really special conference. And um, if you're joining us today for the first time, so happy to meet you and have this chance to connect. Um, I joined San Diego Unified in 2016. They had never had a district wellness supervisor before. And when I came in, the focus really was on our students, but I learned very quickly how important it was to take care of our staff. And it was interesting when I first got there because I had come from UC San Diego. I had been working with schools on wellness and I did understand the amazing benefits that San Diego Unified had available. We give 100% um, for not only the employee, but their dependents. So if you have five children, 100% of your benefits are covered. I mean, really unheard of in many school districts. Um, what a gift. And there were a lot of resources available for staff. And I would say, have you heard of VIBA? That was our Voluntary Employee Benefits Association that provided a lot of it. Does anybody have VIBA here? All right, Heather Cruz um, from my own county. <laughs> um, and in that first year, not one person said they knew about VIBA. Boy, have things changed now. You don't go anywhere that people aren't talking about VIBA. Um, it's really become sort of a household name for our employees. And I say that only because it really did take us really putting an emphasis on what was already available to staff to really change the system um, and make that known. So I always say we are a large district, but what we have done, any district of any size could do. Um, we have done it really without a budget. Um, and I say that because I just want you to know that what we're sharing is accessible. Um, so we'll go to the next slide and just quickly, we've done introductions, but um, I just want to say that, and I'm very sad Kat is leaving us. Um, I, this, is, this is a team. Um, everything we do, we have done together and I'm so proud of that. And Andrea Eaton is amazing and she is the chair of our employee wellness subcommittee of our district wellness council at the leadership level, but really is, is my thought partner in so much of what I do. And I told her today, I said, I want this to be your presentation. So I'm going to kind of take a back seat. I'll, I'll, I'll be speaking a little bit, but I really am going to turn it over to her. Um, and we'll, we'll share a little of uh, the information about staff wellness in our district. Thank you, Kate. So today we're going to talk about our district's employee wellness program. Um, the program kind of started in 2016 with the employment of Kate as a, as a permanent employee wellness, or not employee wellness, but wellness supervisor. Um, and we've gotten local, state, national recognition, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And as she mentioned, what we've done, we really feel can be replicated in other districts or other <laughs> corporations. Um, one of the things that I think we're really proud of, or what I'm really proud of with our employee wellness program is that we've incorporated a program that all employees can participate in, not just teachers, not just uh, principals, but also bus drivers, maintenance staff, landscape staff, custodians, our nurses, food services. We have a lot of part-time, right? Part-time food service workers. And, and then of course, clerical. So we've really tried to incorporate all of our, of our employees in, the, in this program. This, I don't know why this slide looks funny, but I know it's hard to read. But just to tell you, um, we're a very large district, as you probably already know. We're the second largest in California. We have over 200 sites that we have to maintain and take care of. And then there's within there, within that is about 175 schools. Um, employees about 15,000 and over 90,000 students. So it's a huge district. We have the benefit of being huge and having a lot of resources, but we also have a lot of challenges with being so large, right? We have so many different departments and the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing and communicating to everyone is always a challenge. But we'll talk a little bit about how we've overcome some of those challenges. 
We got a new superintendent a couple years ago and his focus has really been equity, belonging and thriving. Those are his goals. And we started the employee wellness program before he came aboard, but we we're already working on these goals. Belonging is a big part of the employee wellness program as well as equity. I talked about all the different levels of employees we're trying to include. And then of course, thriving. So we're already in line with those goals. So it just really meshed well with what he wants to do and what we're doing. John here. Oh, there we are. Thank you, John. Where is John? He's now he's. Oh, there you are over there. <laughs> um, just because we have a few new folks today, um, how many of you work in employee wellness or do anything with employee wellness? I'm just curious. Uh, okay. And then how many of you are familiar with this image here? Okay, let me explain it then. Um, so this is the whole school hope whole community, whole child model um, from the CDC. And this is the foundation of all of our work in wellness. So a lot of people ask me, when you're talking about wellness in San Diego Unified, Kate, what are you talking about? And for us, we really think that it is all of the, the departments, the people, the partners in blue, um, working in collaboration to coordinate our policies and processes and practices to keep students at the center so that they are healthy, safe, engaged, challenged. And I always miss one, healthy, safe, engaged, supported, challenged. I missed one, but there we go. Um, and really that it is this effort with all of those stakeholders in blue working in partnership with our community, that's how we change the system. It's not me doing my little tap dance over here by myself. It's really all of us coming together and talking. And I. And I do feel proud that in our district, this really does happen. Um, and so this is the foundation of our wellness initiative. And if we go to the next slide, um, these are really my kind of areas of responsibility in the, the district. So we have uh, the coordination of our wellness policy that is done um, with our district wellness council. That's our leadership body. And then we have our healthy schools program at every school in our district, we have a designated school wellness champion that's helping lead the work. We talked a little bit about that on Tuesday's session. Um, we also have, we haven't touched on this in any of our sessions, we have site-based centers for wellness. Those are for students and families to come in and connect to resources at a particular school site. There's probably a little bit of a heavier emphasis on emotional well-being in those centers. And then um, I'll skip the middle there. And then the last one is the continuous improvement of our efforts year over year. But what we're gonna focus on today is healthy employees. Healthy employees. I apologize because this, this is not how the slides looked when I designed <laughs> them. I'm not sure why we're having a lot of formatting. That's all right. So yeah. I'll explain what the slide shows. So basically we highlighted the district supports that we provide to all employees. So in addition to a site, the sites have a wellness program. At a district level, we coordinate a lot of programs for employees as well. So one of those ways is the Employee Wellness Subcommittee, of which I'm the chair. We kind of talked about that. That's part of the Wellness Council. At that committee, it's composed of representatives from the different central offices. And then we also have representatives from our insurance carriers, our insurance broker, Viva, which Kate talked a little bit about. And then we also have um, representatives from our benefits department, um, food services. We've really tried to incorporate in addition to, to location, but also the type of employees that we have. We do quarterly challenges. Uh, we have Walktober coming up or Fall into Fitness where we're encouraging walking and you can compete with your rival school uh, to, to go on walks and log your steps and win prizes. So that's something that we're working on right now. Also doing quarterly events just to uh, promote wellness, camaraderie, uh, and just different activities at the school sites. We also have uh, two times a year, we do a district-wide wellness event. And it's really like a festival. It's, it's got vendors selling 
shirts or essential oils. There's health screenings. We have food, healthy food, just a lot of different things. And we've tried to change it up every, every six months to bring new folks in. Our last one was in September. It's kind of a welcome back for everyone as well. And we had over 700 people show up and that was the biggest that we've had. And we've been doing these twice a year for two years now and they've been really successful. And it's something that people look forward to. They get the leadership comes and they mingle. So it's also becomes this like schmooze time, which everyone kind of likes. And it's very relaxing, fun, and it's a nice break for employees. So we're really happy that we're getting support to continue with those. And then monthly, we do an e-newsletter. We have um, health and wellness staff webinars on a variety of different topics that we'll offer to staff. And then we have a toolkit, which we'll talk a little bit about later, but that is an opportunity for you to get, um, or for the site to get turnkey resources that they can bring to their staff with a lot of different tips on how to promote wellness at their school sites. This is one example that we've put together, like a list of self-care apps that are available for staff. Some of these are provided at no cost by our insurance carriers, like they get the premium version of the Calm app um, for no cost, and then some other apps that we found to be really helpful and, and um, you know, free for staff. <laughs> We talked about um, Viva. We work really closely with our health insurance carriers and Kate talked about the breadth of benefits that we have. And one of our big, big focuses is just awareness and making sure folks know what they have available to them as employees. So we work really closely with the carriers to get those updates. What are they changing? What are they adding? And making sure that gets pushed out to staff. These are just some of the examples, you know, gym discounts. I mentioned the Calm app, behavioral health apps that are available for staff. So just really trying to get the word out and letting folks know what's available. So Viva is our um, insurance broker, and they've been a tremendous resource for us. They provide fitness classes uh, for staff virtually, and they'll come to their site and do a fitness class or a cooking demo, any type of health and wellness information they can also provide. They also have, and I'll go to the next slide, they also have a brick and mortar building which is called the Viva Resource Center. There's two of them in San Diego. They have a gym, an open gym that members can go to at no cost. They also provide classes. They have sound healing. They do the ear acupuncture and it's all at no cost. It's all part of our benefits. So we always wanna let folks know about these opportunities. Care navigation is also available for staff. And that's something that you can sit down with someone on a regular basis and they'll help you really navigate through your benefits to, to reach the goals that you wanna set for yourself. So for example, if you wanna get off your diabetes medication, they can help you find fitness classes or cooking classes or other resources that you have at no cost to accomplish those goals. So this is a great resource that I don't always think is being utilized enough, but it's something that we're always trying to let folks know that's available. We have a staff wellness website that we put together that really has all of this information in one place. <laughs> because as you're probably already seeing, there's just a lot. And so links to the Viva Resource Center to find out when the classes are, links to the insurance carriers to find out what's covered and what's not, just really trying to put all of this information in one place as well as just good resources on different topics. So I mentioned a little bit about um, our Healthy Schools program, which involves having a site wellness lead at every school. 
And one of their goals is to do a student well being activity and a staff well being activity at their school every year. And so we provide them with the resources to help them to do that. And then um, giving them using the toolkit, which we'll talk about on the next slide. We Oh, give them tips for that. I'm sorry, Kate. This was your slide. Oh, fine. So I'll let you finish. This is the great thing about our team. Everybody knows the information. <laughs> I do want to tell you, though, that that beautiful woman in that photo, you may see her in a JCPenney ad soon. They um, partnered with teachers across the country. We were fortunate through Healthier Generation to be able to nominate one of our school wellness coordinators. And there is a new line of Abbott Elementary clothing at JCPenney's, and there's going to be commercials. So if you see, that's Florence Alabanza. She is amazing, and we're so proud of her. <laughs> you want me to go to the next slide? Sure. Yeah. So this, this is um, what we've talked a little bit about that at every school site, we have a school wellness coordinator. We ask them to form a committee of students, staff, and families that represent are representative of their school. And we give that committee every month a toolkit. And in that toolkit, this is one of the resources we give them. It is um, to help promote staff wellness. Um, each month, we give them staff icebreakers. We give them brain breaks to use in meetings. We give them upcoming events. What are some of the free classes Viva's offering? You know, really basically give them everything they need to make it easy for them to promote staff wellness to their school site. So this has been a new resource that's been really popular. And then I, I'm, I'm really struggling with the fonts being all funny. Sorry, <laughs> um, but the, uh, the, we could not do all of this work without our partners. So I just always think it's important um, to acknowledge all the ways that they help us. So obviously we've mentioned Kaiser, Viva and United Healthcare, but then also our partnership with UC San Diego Center for Community Health um, they really help to go out to a lot of our central offices and schools and say, let's map out a walking route and then let's promote that walking route around your school. Here's how much a mile would be. In doing a lot of um, adjustments to the built environment helped us put up posters uh, beside the elevator that said, you know, you can burn a lot of calories just taking that one flight of stairs. Um, so they helped us a lot with changes to the built environment. And I really I want to acknowledge the, the work that they did with um, through SnapEd funding. Um, healthier Generation Cat's here, and we love her so. Um, and the American Heart Association, we'll talk a little bit more about them later. And then our county health and human service agency. These have all been some of the key partners in our work uh, to support our employees. Okay, so we put together our top six recommendations for employee wellness. So I'm going to go through those. First, know your workforce. So I work in the maintenance department. And when I first started working on wellness, it was really because I felt like there was a lot of folks in my in my building that were not doing healthy things or they, you know, felt like you know, we have um, we have a lumber mill, we have an iron shop, we have a paint booth, we have, you know, electricians, uh, custodians, landscape staff, a lot of folks that are out in the field all day long. They think they're really active. They think that they are, they're moving, they're, you know, I'm healthy, I can go to McDonald's for lunch, it's not a big deal right that kind of thing so i really wanted to in introduce them to what we have available as employees um, how you can lead a healthier life um, take care of yourself not hurt yourself at work so that was a big part of knowing my workforce right what do, what do i want to bring to them what do i think that they can benefit from in the type of employees that we have and really looking at um, what what can they get out of it? What will they want to get out of it? What will motivate them and inspire them? So really knowing your workforce is the first step of putting together a plan and then you know what direction to take it. 
Diversifying communications is a big part of that as well, right? We have a lot of folks who work out in the field. Bus drivers aren't sitting at a desk checking email all day. So sending out email blasts isn't the best way of reaching all employees. So we've really tried to, in addition to sending the email blasts, maybe it's just good old fashioned flyers um, all around the building, in the bathroom. Also, um, communicating with leadership so they can pass the word down to their staff. We have monthly safety meetings and wellness is always part of that agenda. Even if it's just a few minutes to just give updates on what's going on or what's coming up or getting feedback on what folks are wanting to learn about. So design for your population. And this goes back to knowing your workforce um, we have classes early in the morning because we want to catch people before they start their day because they're out in the field for the majority of the day. So that's one example. Um, looking at our half-time employees and trying to incorporate wellness in that short time that they're with us. We've also looked at site assessments, having each of our central offices as well as our schools doing assessments to find those gap areas. And everyone has a different culture, everyone has different needs. So really designing for the population for your site. We um, have been really encouraged employee surveys, just, hey, what do you wanna see? What days of the week are better? Do you want a lunchtime class or something in the morning? Lunch and learns, you know, what are folks looking for? What do they wanna learn about? And then um, end of year reflections, always, you know, looking back at what worked and what didn't work and trying to make it better moving forward. I think this has been critical to our success. We have the same system in place at every school, at every central office, and everybody's following a similar process. What's also important about that and has always been so important to me is that those site leads, they need to have choice and voice in what they're doing. If I come in and I'm like, hey, I'm the district, which just happens a lot and we joked about it the other day, it happens a lot in our district, you're the district. If I come in and I'm like, you're all going to do this, it does not go over that well very often. But if I say, we're gonna all follow this process and you're gonna look at your own data and you're gonna decide the areas where you want to improve, that's how we change the system. In order to do that, we need to, at the leadership level, all be in agreement about how these things are being done. We need to have a shared understanding at the leadership level across departments that this is the system. It took a while for all of those departments to understand what school wellness committees were and what are you doing? And there's all these other assessments that are happening, but because we are continuously communicating to all of those departments through our district wellness council because we follow this process with our schools year after year um, i really think that having this collective impact approach has really served us very well and on the next slide it's sort of along these same lines but really making sure that that shared system is communicated in a way that those who are doing the work feel supported um, is very important. So we do have um, a wellness institute for our school wellness coordinators. It's a full day training and we really try to make it fun, some experiential learning. We're trying to get chair massages. That's what everybody wants, but uh, we haven't gotten that yet. Um, but I think having this shared system across schools, now the school wellness coordinators look forward to it. And I have to tell you all, I've been here for a few days and the school wellness coordinators are like, where are you? I need my toolkit. Why haven't you sent out the Wellness Institute registration date yet? But I mean, I think that's great because they actually want to come. <laughs> so so that's, a, that's a win in my book. And the fact that they know that these things are coming and, okay, you're, you're a day late from what you usually do. That's the having that shared system. It's working and that's taken a few years, but I, I like that part of it. Over to you, Kat. <laughs> Okay, um, <clears throat> so one of the things I want to talk about uh, is benchmarking. Um, and this is important, and for those of you that may not um, understand exactly what that means, I'll, I'll describe it to you. So benchmarking success 
is a process uh, where you're going to measure your organization's success against similar institutions to discover how to improve your performance. Uh, can be used to compare program implementation, operations, outcome metrics, and it promotes learning from the experiences of others. Uh, it can help you to identify potential areas of concern in your own workforce. And metrics obtained from benchmarking data can help you to focus on changes needed to improve your program early on, saving time, energy, and resources. So in San Diego USD, we've used benchmarking to further our goals and achievements, and we've done this at all levels. So we do it at the site level by the, uh, using the implementation of the school wellness policy uh, assessment or the Thriving Schools Integrated Assessment. We do it at the district level uh, through the Urban School Wellness Coalition and at the regional level through Live Well Recognition. And so we understand sort of what those standards of success are and are always trying, striving to achieve it. And this photo, you go back, just back to the photo, I wanna give some photo cred here. This is Knox Middle School staff engaged in a yoga class. It looks like they're doing seated yoga warrior pose, but this is just a quick, great example to really see folks in action, enjoying some physical activity. And uh, I wanna talk just a little bit about the Thriving Schools Integrated Assessment since that's really uh, my lane. So. Uh, Kate and her team decided to customize, customize the assessment. So the original assessment has about 13 specific uh, staff well-being questions in the category of cultivating staff well-being. She has chosen seven of those for uh, schools to focus on and make improvements in. Um, in this assessment total, there are 48 indicators, so that's covering all of those various areas that we saw on the WISC model, so family engagement, local school wellness policy, physical education, physical activity, nutrition. So those are all covered as well, but there is a specific section dedicated to staff well-being. And as mentioned earlier, the expectation is that uh, these wellness committees will choose each year a staff well-being goal. And we used the um, award system, the America's Healthiest School Recognition, to really, you know, set the standard for the schools around staff well-being. So this is a national award. Uh, it's, it's an award system that's been around for a long time. It has morphed and changed a little bit over the past couple of years. We used to have a, a bronze, silver, gold level, and you had to meet various criteria for that. But what we decided to do, because it's very hard for a school at any given time to focus on all of those different areas. And so we changed it so that if a school was really focused one year on staff well-being, or maybe they were just focused on really making improvements in family engagement that year, that they could meet these standards and apply for an award. They apply for an award, they have to provide evidence, and San Diego USD has been awarded significantly over the years um, and last year when we changed the recognition program we awarded 18 schools in San Diego USD and this year we recognized actually 32. It says 31 on there but we accepted one application a day late because <laughs> they were having trouble uploading so we we recognize 32 schools and those schools can apply for up to nine awards, so up to nine categories. So they were awarded a total of 88 awards in those 32 schools. So super, yeah, super impressive, you know, due to the work of the, you know, the district uh, court council that really provides that monthly support um, and the work of the wellness coordinators, which is really uh, just incredible. So it's been a great motivator for schools um, I know there were some of you that were here when we talked more about the award, but in this continuous improvement process that we follow, uh, there's no wrong door to enter. So if a school is like, oh, I, you know, I don't know if I can get a committee together and do all these steps this year, well, why don't you just see in the system if you're eligible for an award? And sometimes that's the incentive to get schools started and looking at it, principals get excited and are like, hey, we already got one award, let's go for the others. Um, and then continue this process of making improvements, which is what uh, San Diego has done really an outstanding job of. I'm just going to touch on this briefly because this is a county level tool, but for your county, Health and Human Service Agency, they may be able to do something like this through their SNAP-Ed funds. Does 
does anybody work for the county here? Health and Human Services? Great. Okay, so maybe you'll be able to answer questions if this is doable or not. But in our county, we have, uh, it's called Live Well at Work, um, and it is particularly to support healthy work sites. Um, they have come up with a really killer um, assessment tool that we use with our central offices because the assessment tool that we're using with Healthier Generation is very school school based, understandably. So I like the Live Well at Work assessment um, for our central offices because they operate more like a corporate work site. And it's been great because we are now, our central offices may have somewhere between 300 and 500 more sometimes employees. Um, so we really are reaching a lot of folks um, through these central offices. So they have a site lead and they're completing an assessment too. So uh, we use that to benchmark at the regional level across all of our central offices. How are you doing? And then we're also able to look at other corporations. How are we doing in comparison to them? So uh, I'll just leave it at that and maybe the county can let you know <laughs> if there's anything like that. Um, and then has anyone applied for the American Heart, uh, yes, the American Heart Association's Workplace Health Achievement Index in the past for your organization? This is any organization, not just schools. This has been such a wonderful, um, I'd say leaders, board members, superintendents, they like awards. So this award has really given credibility to what we're doing in our schools and with our staff. Um, and we have received the American Heart Association Workplace Health Achievement Index for many, many years. This year they changed the whole model um, and we went back to silver and boy was my superintendent mad. And he came up to me at the board meeting and said, we are going to get back to gold next year. And I was like, yes, we will. <laughs> okay, noted. Um, but they did add some really beautiful questions about mental health, about diversity, equity, and inclusion that I really respect. And, and I like that we have some goals about where we can continue to grow. So I'm okay we're at silver. It's good to, you know, have some, some aspirational uh, place to, to move this work. And that's our, is motivated. yes, the superintendent so, so, so. is motivated. So that ties in with recognizing and celebrating success. And we've really tried to highlight what everyone's doing, making them feel great about the efforts that they've put in and how it's really paying off. And fortunately, these awards kind of give us outside legitimacy as well. So it's been something that we always want to tout. So here's, Here's our top six that we talked about. Um, knowing your workforce, diversifying communication, designing for your population, that shared structure, benchmarking, and then, of course, celebrating success. So here's some tools that we've used that you may find helpful as well. Every year from our insurance carriers, we have them present to the Employee Wellness Subcommittee on utilization data. So they're able to tell us for all San Diego Unified employees how they were using their health insurance in the last year. Um, so they can tell us how many people um, went to the doctor for cancer screening or how, how many, and they do it in percentages, it's an aggregate, so we're not, we don't know per site, we don't know any other details really, but it does give us a good overview of how folks are going, why people are going to the doctor, and what percentages are utilizing those services. So we found that musculoskeleton, I know I didn't say that right, but <laughs> that's one of the highest needs. That's one of the highest areas that folks go to the doctor for. So that means maybe we should do some more um, stretching classes or really promoting fitness, right? Because people are getting hurt, um, whether or not it's at work or not. And so those have been really helpful for us to kind of see where the needs are with our employees. Um, Kate talked about the American Heart Association Workplace Health Achievement Index. We've also used that to see where our gap areas are and where we want to focus on. 
um, yeah, we want to get that gold, but we also want to uh, look at all of those items that the American Heart Association uh, considers important for a workplace. So those are also uh, tools for us to look to look at. Um, Alliance for a Healthier Generation has a great resource in the Action Center. Kat talked about it yesterday. That's something we, we, we've used. Uh, our school sites use the assessment tool to benchmark. There's a lot of resources there. We've also been able to use that information for our central offices as well. And then uh, Kate talked about the County of San Diego Live Well Work Program. So a lot of resources out there we've tried to take advantage of to get free information for employee wellness. And that, that summarizes our presentation. If you have any questions. I just want to say thank you. We're going to have to leave early to catch a train, but how beautiful it's been to be a part of this, how much we are grateful to Kirsten and Mar Marina and all of those of you who have helped make this event possible and how lucky you are to have this event. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.